In Victorian England, the sniffing of snuff was a popular activity. You would uh, pinch a little bit, sprinkle it on the back of your hand, and inhale. Why? Because you get a real quick hit of nicotine. It takes about seven seconds for the nicotine to get to your brain, and it is kind of pleasurable. It's still available today, although not around here, which is the reason that, to tell you the truth, I've had to fake this with a, a cap and printed out thing. But uh, elsewhere in the world, very, very uh, readily available. Very interesting background. Way back, pre-Columbian times, natives in South America would grind up the leaves of the spike plant to very, very small particles, sniff it. Columbus and his followers uh, introduced this to Spain. But it was a Frenchman, the ambassador to Portugal from France by the name of Jean Nicot, N-I-C-O-T, who really popularized it. And he claimed that not only would it give you pleasure, but it had medicinal properties. It could relieve headaches. And he introduced it to Catherine de' Medici, who was at that time Queen of France. And she said that her headaches just disappeared when she sniffed snuff. So you can imagine the impact that had. It became very popular uh, across Europe. Was there any great hazard to it? Probably not, because the amount that you're really inhaling is really, really very little. However, when you're smoking, you're getting more uh, nicotine because, of course, you will smoke many, many uh, cigarettes. Now, therein lies another interesting situation. We know that smoking kills. Tells you right on the package. But here's the interesting toxicological story of cigarettes. Each cigarette contains anywhere from about 8 to 24 milligrams of nicotine. Now, what does that really mean? terms of toxicity. It takes about 40 to 60 milligrams of nicotine to kill a person so that the available nicotine from a pack of smokes is enough to kill several people. But how come people don't die immediately from smoking? Because very little of the nicotine actually gets into your bloodstream. Most of it is exhaled and a lot of it is just broken down by the heat. However, if you were to extract the nicotine in the cigarette and add it to a beverage or to food, then you have a potential murder weapon. And this has happened. The first case was back in 1850 when a Belgian count decided that he wanted some inheritance money and he tried to do away with his brother-in-law. Not only tried, but was very successful, poisoned his food with nicotine. The authorities became suspicious. And at that time, there was no test for nicotine. And they enlisted a Belgian professor of chemistry uh, by the name of Professor Stas, who was given the challenge of coming up with a test. And he managed. He came up with a test where using a particular blend of solvents, he was able to extract the nicotine from the flesh of the corpse. And eventually, he was convicted. Oh, but people don't learn. 150 years later, in the U.S., Paul Curry decided to do away with his wife. Again, why? Inheritance. So he conspired to put nicotine into a syringe. He had extracted it from tobacco leaves, just like the Belgian count had done through a distillation process. He injected it into the skin just above his wife's ear, thinking that this was the perfect murder, he would get away with it. Well, he didn't reckon on the fact that chemists had followed up on Stas' original studies and were now able to extract and identify the nicotine. And they eventually did that, and he was convicted. And he spend, is now spending the rest of his life in prison. What about our friend, the Belgian count, who attempted to do this in 1850 and was convicted? He didn't fare quite as well. It wasn't lifetime imprisonment for him. For him, it was the guillotine. And he admitted his crime eventually, and the only thing that he asked was that the blade of the guillotine be sharpened so that it would sever his head in one stroke. There would be no repeated pounding, as sometimes happened. And indeed, the blade was sharpened, and his head came off with one chop.
do not try to poison people with nicotine.